cultivation to the mind is as necessary as food to the body. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's episode of 7 Good Minutes, we learn about the art of self-cultivation. Enjoy. Isn't it the case that we should always stay true to ourselves, which means that we ought to know who we are and organize our lives in ways that are compatible with our personalities. When we look for a partner, for example, we look for someone that we're compatible with. And in regards to education and work, we need to do something that fits our characteristics. However, not knowing who we are seems to be a problem. But luckily, this problem can be solved by taking a personality test, by talking to a counselor, or perhaps by going on a long solo trip around the world to, quote unquote, find ourselves. Because after all, our true selves lie somewhere hidden deep within. Right? Well, according to Michael Poet, Harvard professor of Chinese history and author of the book The Path, this way of thinking is extremely limited and even dangerous when it comes to how we live our lives. In Chinese philosophy, there's no fixed self the way we see it in the Western world. Who we are and what we could become is much more tangible than a fixed set of characteristics that define a personality. This Eastern self is always evolving, changing, losing and gaining, and isn't so much defined by what's within, but by what we do. So it cannot be found, but it can be cultivated. Self-cultivation is a psychological process that's part of the ancient Chinese system of thought called Confucianism. Its founder, Confucius, firmly believed in the power of ritual and how it can make our lives better. The word ritual may sound a little bit old-fashioned and intended for either religious people or those who are indoctrinated by some kind of ideology. But the power of ritual is vastly underestimated. Confucius realized that rituals and ceremonies are actually forms of social cement. Their transformative nature not only shapes societies, it also shapes ourselves. Therefore, engaging in certain behaviors in a disciplined manner, simple things like morning rituals, habits, exercises, can bring about incredible change way beyond our limiting beliefs that, unfortunately, dictate the lives of many. This video explores the art of becoming better based on the teachings of Confucius. Confucius was a philosopher and politician in ancient China, born in the 6th century BC in the vassal state of Lu. Because of his dissatisfaction with the ruling aristocrats, he created a way of life and governance that later became known as Confucianism. The Confucian teachings, which would later determine the lives of millions of people, are still more than relevant in modern day China. Confucius emphasized morality, order and respect and is geared towards social harmony, which can be achieved through traditions, ceremonies, and of course, rituals. Here, we see a fundamental difference between Confucianism and its counterpart Taoism. Taoist sage Zhuangzi, for example, pleaded against these artificial ways of living that will only disturb the natural course of things. A Taoist embraces our natural state and approaches life conformable to the flow of nature with minimal interference. A Confucianist, however, acknowledges our inborn natural state, but sees us, humans, as diamonds in the rough, as agents of great potential. Because through practice and training, we can become better, more skilled at life, more integrated, more virtuous. Self-cultivation is about enhancing and perfecting how we act and relate to each other, which can bring about tremendous positive change on a personal level as well as a communal level. So how does this self-cultivation work? To understand this, we first need to understand the self. With the help of personality tests, counselors and self-help books, we seem to have totally figured out who we are. 
Some people even fetishize their newly found personality type, as they fully identify themselves with it, to a point that they cling to it. Unfortunately, this enchains them to a very limited view of who they are. Michael Poet is very clear about one aspect of modern Western civilization. He stated that the way we think about the self is wrong. As opposed to existing beliefs, the Chinese view the self as a fragmented, non-fixed phenomenon. It's not something we can find if we go within. Instead, Poet describes the self as a mess. Thus, we're all a bunch of messes, meaning that what we perceive as the self is a gathering of decentralized manifestations, like emotions, thoughts, and many other sensations. We could compare it to a Buddhist concept called anatta, which means no self. Being a mess may seem like a bad thing, but it's actually very liberating. Usually, people believe that who they are is more or less unchangeable. This is just who I am, one could say, when reflecting on the fact that he or she is easily angry. Having a short fuse, in this case, is seen as part of a personality, or in some cases, as part of culture. But this view is very limited. It's even potentially dangerous to believe that certain behavioral patterns cannot be changed, as we keep finding ourselves in the same destructive situations over and over again, like abusive relationships, substance abuse, or criminal activities that land us in prison. Why? Because we believe that we can't change things for the better. Please keep in mind, this is about half of the entire presentation. If you're up for a treat, you should definitely listen to the whole thing. You can do so by clicking the link labeled View the Full Video on YouTube in the show notes. So that does it for this episode of 7 Good Minutes. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.